In fact, segment tonight, the national media continuing to demean religion. It's been happening for years. And now NBC correspondent Luke Russert, son of the late Tim Russert, is speaking out about it. I think the current um, world in which we live in, specifically with the American media, snark is valued. And it's very easy to come after people of faith, no matter what their religion is, if they're Jewish, Catholic, Protestant, Muslim, Hindu, that you're sort of tagged with this, uh, this label of being puritanical and not understanding uh, of others or of different, uh, different viewpoints. And I think that's kind of, it, it's, it's, it's lazy, number one. And I think it's just something that sort of feeds the, the, the snickering masses, if you will, in, in that regard. And here's a perfect example of the snark. Last Thursday in USA Today, their book guy, Bob Minsheimer, wrote, quote, after Bill O'Reilly's interview with CBS's 60 Minutes, in which he said he was inspired by the Holy Ghost to write his new book. Killing Jesus jumps from number two to number one. O'Reilly panned the critics, saying, the anti-Christian people don't want you to read Killing Jesus, unquote. Joining us now from Washington, Fox News media analyst Howard Kurtz. So do you agree, first of all, with Russert? I agree with Luke Russer uh, that in much of the mainstream media there is a wariness, a condescension, and good for him for speaking out, by the way, toward very religious people. But I think he goes too far in saying there's an effort to come after people of faith. And to me, it's more of a cultural divide, Bill, based on, in part, on ignorance because the mainstream media, particularly in the big cities, tends to be a very secular business. All right, when you say a cultural divide, though, what does that mean? Why, so you're a secular person living in Manhattan or Georgetown, D.C. or Malibu, California. So what? I mean, you're comfortable in your uh, agnosticism or whatever it is you embrace. Why would you go try to demean somebody um, who believes? Well, I think that although many of the people in those cities uh, may be, you know, church-going Christians or synagogue-attending Jews, uh, they, there aren't a lot of, for example, evangelical Christians in those ranks. And so they're, they almost seem like an alien species at times. And so when you get uh, televangelists or politicians who wear their religion on their sleeves who get into trouble, and there's not only an effort to pounce on that, uh, but also maybe a lack of understanding of, of what they believe well, in their hearts. Well, there's got to be a reason why they do it. Um, for example, the the uh, priest scandal in the Catholic Church was met with glee in much of the liberal press, and they used it as a, uh, a hammer. Uh, glee? It was a horrifying story. It may be a horrifying story, but don't you tell me you don't know how much they enjoy printing the horror, because they celebrated it, and the columnists went wild. And I'll give you examples, I mean, all day long. Huffington Post, a guy named Larry Doyle, Bill Maher on HBO, uh, Joan Walsh on MSNBC. Uh, a bunch of gay activists, a bunch of abortion people, all day long, just hammering. Everybody in the Catholic Church is an idiot. All the priests are uh, perverts. And you know what happened. You saw it happen. So, I mean... Well, I don't think that applies to the reporters at the Boston Globe who first broke that story. You were mentioning some liberal pundits. But here, here's another side to it. The History Channel runs this series this spring, The Bible. Record-breaking ratings, that's more than folks, 10 million though. people. That's not the media. The folks have no problem with not religion. The media. It's owned by NBC. Okay, here's another example, and I think this is an important one. Pope Francis has gotten glowing coverage, and deservedly so. Now, you'll say, well, that's well, because... why is he deservedly he, so? Because Pope Benedict did not get uh, glowing coverage. Now, I know the reason why Pope Francis... Francis is getting glowing coverage. Well, you I bet you would say, say you well, you'll say it's because he's more tolerant toward gays, at least in his in his uh, Absolutely. words. Absolutely, there's no there's no doubt abortion. about it. Right, but he's also a very media savvy pope. He's a humble leader, and I think he's on Twitter. And I think that well, a here, lot of people deal, who right. aren't even Christian, you're, you're making my uh, point like what for he's me. doing. Okay. The left is basically against religion because religion opposes things like gay marriage and abortion. That's what it's all about. All right. So a guy like me then who uh, writes this book, and I, and I firmly believe that uh, the secular national media doesn't want anybody to buy this book, and I'll, and I'll point to the fact that very few have even mentioned it. I mean, this is the far and away the best-selling book in the world. It is, right. but was it CBS's 60 Minutes that it's put a, you on to talk about killing Jesus? 60 Minutes is a different Jesus? animal, though. It's a, right. 60 Minutes is a different animal. That's a reportage program. They report on what's happening in America. The, a lot but, of people jumped on you. A lot of people jumped on you for saying that you, had, you woke up out of a dream and you, I didn't you felt that God... I wake up out of a dream. That's a mis... Uh, look, okay. I simply us. put forth what every Christian believes, if he or she is a Christian, that inspiration comes from God, that there's an interactive God. And that and was used, as you know, 
All right? Yes, to I'm attack agreeing with you. There's me. nothing. There's nothing remarkable about that statement for a person of faith. It was used to attack you. My people don't like you. But at the same time, you love to take on your critics on this and it helps you sell more books. Well, that's not my primary motivation for talking about what I did. But why did they attack me? Why did they use that, which is all that is, is an expression of what every Christian believes. Why would they use that to attack me? Why? You have a lot of detractors out there, Bill, who are happy to take anything that you say that's, quote, controversial, and I'm not but saying this was the controversial. Religion thing? Why don't you say it's, it's a boring book, like somebody said, <laughs> which is unbelievable, but they did. Uh, why, why attack me on the religion end? Well, I think where you and I disagree is no, that... No, no, answer I, you, the question. You, why attack me on the, on the religion end? Because to some people in the media, and clearly people who are not big fans of yours, saying that uh, you were inspired by God to write this book sounds like, oh, he's kind of a fanatic. He has but voices everybody is inspired. I'm not agreeing with that. All Christians are inspired by God to do things. And Look, that's the cultural divide I'm talking about. I'll tell you why they did it. Because they were playing to their crew. All right? Their crew despises religion and any expression of it. And that's what these people were playing to. That's why the USA guy put that in there playing to his anti-religion crew. Think about it. And that's what's wrong with the national media. It's a little pack, and they all think the same. Well, I, the media is a very big, sprawling animal. I don't think everybody is anti-religious. There are many religious people in the media. But I will give you this. There is a cultural divide, and I think there should be more, better, and more sympathetic coverage of organized religion. All right, Howard. Thank you very much. When we come right back, is it legal?